I'm going to come back to this problem because this, this example we did yesterday, I'll make it bigger. This example we did yesterday is an important one to understand past by reference, but I'll come back to it. First of all, I want you to understand the difference of when I would use something like calc area Okay, so now I'm going to write this function and we'll watch the couple of differences that can happen. Wait, I don't know how I got that done. Okay, so then this is just simply area equals length. So this function does exactly what I said it would do. It's not printing it. It's just calculating it. Does everybody agree? It's doing exactly what it says. Okay? Well, this stuff I spelled it wrong. Okay? So now when I call this guy, when we call a void function, we say calc. And I can either give it numbers. All that matters is that I have to pass it two integers. Now, the last guy cannot be a number. Why not? Why can this not be a reference variable cannot be a number? Because I can't change the number, agree? So the last guy has to be an argument. Or a variable, I'm sorry. And I, I could call it area. So I'm going to ask you this question. Does the name of a actual argument have to match the name of a formal argument? Can the name of a formal actual argument match the formal argument? Yes. So this could be A, could be A, it doesn't matter. So long as it's declared here, we don't care what it's called. Does that make sense? What's best practice? Well, the thing is, when you write this guy, you have no idea who's going to call you. So I could be doing the area of a room. I could be do doing the area of a building. I could be doing the area of a rug. So you know what I mean? So just whatever's clear, if A is a terrible name, that's a, ba that's a bad practice, right? So if this is room area, if it's area, you know, whatever, just so that we, there's many more actual than there are formal. There's one formal. You write a function that does something. Many, many people might call your function, right? Many, especially look at the function like um, power. Coming from all over the place. So the idea of a function is multi-use. But who knows? Okay? So now then, this is one area. Now, if I want to see what the answer is, I'm not seeing it. So how would I see what the answer of room area is? What do I have to do? I have to see out it after the call. So, um, Let's just run this so you can see the difference with the calling it. Hopefully, they're making a mistake. Okay. All right, so it says area is 20. Now, any questions about this? Well, let's make sure you understand this. Okay? So, this is a void function. I began it with the verb. I have two guys that are, these are the formal arguments <laughs> length and width. But, but what is the scope of length? Local to calc area. Arguments are local to the function in which they're declared. Okay? What is the scope of width? You said scope is local to the... Yeah, it's local to the function. The scope of length in this case is local to calc area. The scope of length is local to calc area. It's only known inside that function. It's scope local to... The scope of length is local to... Area? No, you tell me. What's it local to? Oh, how area. Yep. Okay, scope of width is local to? Oh, and the scope of area is. So therefore, if I wanted to make this guy, if I, so let's change it now from 4 and 5. If I'm going to make this length and width, that's perfectly fine, right? Because they each have their own local cop. Well, I mean, length and width are common names. I'm not going to prohibit other functions from using them, right? But I have to know length and width before I call, so I'd have to ask the user. So 
so most likely I could put this into a loop, you know. And I'll use zero, zero to stop this loop. And then I can keep, you know, I put it in a loop, blah, blah, blah. We all know how to do that now because, you know, we're just basically learning the tool how to use functions. So I can enter any length in this and um, just make sure I'm going to some text here. So if I enter five and five, there is 25, by a zero and zero now, okay? So we're just moving, the, okay, so any questions about, let me, let me draw one picture first. So in this case, since I, this is Calgaria, if I have main, let's draw the, make sure you understand this. If I have my main, like I do up here, I have length, I have width, and I have room area. So when I call this guy with length, length had a little have five and five. Okay? So this guy got copied. He had length and width and area. So the first guy's passed by value. So this guy gets a copy of that, so it's five. This guy gets a copy of that, so it's five. Area got what? So it got the address of room area. So when I calculated area here, where did the 25 go? It went right there. Does everybody see that? Yes, no, maybe? Okay, now I have another option here. Don't leave me. First of all, questions first. Ask now for, no, I'm not going to hold the key, but ask me. Don't get there down. Okay, so what about if instead of, do I have another option besides calling calc area? Did I have another option besides calling calc area? Could I make another kind of function? I'm just going to copy this just so it's less typing. Did I copy it? I'm going to make another function and I'm going to call this guy area. So what's the, how's that going to look different? What does this mean in front of it if it doesn't have a verb? So what kind of function is this? Value returning. Do I need this guy now? No. What does this guy need now? If it's a value returning function, what must it have? Everybody understand the difference between this very function that puts the answer in the third argument and this value returning function that returns the answer. Okay, so then what's the difference in the call? So I'm now going to say area and what do I need to do with this call to area? Why is this call to area wrong? What's wrong with this call to area? I either have to store it, use it, or print it. Okay? So one thing I could do is I could plug this right in. Do you see the difference between... Let's run it. Let's make sure you see both. What did I do? Oh, I didn't prototype. I have to prototype the area. In Java, you do not need to prototype, just FYI. C requires it. Okay, I need to fix my, um, I need a window. Does everybody see the difference? Just look carefully at the difference between these two functions. 
Which one do you like better? The first one's better. The first one's better because I can plug it in. So if I'm doing something mathematical and I'm only returning one value, then I probably don't use the value returning functions. But I can't do a return of two guys or three guys. So I have no choice in that case. Does everybody see that? So in general, for a mathematical function that I'm returning a single value, use the area. That's where that's more general purpose. Does that make sense, everybody? Does that make sense? Okay. I feel like it's a lack of questions. Okay. All right. Now, what about if I want to write a function called get dimensions? And this is one of your homework problems. And I want this job right here, where I enter the length. Since I'm doing this twice, I think, well, that's redundant. See how I'm doing the same two lines twice? Let's move those lines to a function. And what type of function should this be? Function should this be? Come on, you should know this because it begins with a verb, so it should be. And then, but this won't work. So what do I need to do in this case? Because the goal of get dimensions, I need to be passed by reference. So I'm going to change this to I don't know what's wrong. And now, first of all, the advantage of this is if I don't do any checking of these numbers, I can do it all in here. I can, you can say, you know, if they're negative, I can ask again. Do you know what I mean? I've kind of moved that task down here. But we said both of these guys need to be passed by reference. Could I use a pass by value? Uh, I'm sorry, could I use a value returning function for this? Okay? Why can't, why can't I use a, a value returning function for this? I can't return to it. I can't return to it. Where did I lose you? What don't you get? Does everybody see the difference between pass by value and pass by reference? Okay, good. Then since you all get any questions so far, and any any questions on now, because now you should see the big difference between a value returning function and when to use it, which I think you asked me to begin with, between putting that as your third argument, which sometimes is appropriate, but I can always use a value return to a very general thing. The other thing with value returning is we tend to avoid proof statements in here. I don't want to see out statement inside a mathematical function. I want to decide what I want to print. I don't want the function to be doing some weird printing for me. Okay? So it just does the calculation and that's it. They're short and sweet. Okay. So let's look at the practice. Everybody um, pull out the sheet I gave you yesterday. Tuesday. So, this where the, it says in the area. The area the yeah. Is that where it's just, um, what, is, what is that called? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Ask me again. So like the in area and in length. Yeah. What, what is that called? This is the name. Of, okay, the, it's like the function definition, I guess. But okay. this is the name of the function. This is the type that it's returning. Okay. So whatever type here, if I was doing float, that would have to be float. Okay. So the type here indicates what type is being returned. Okay. And then this is the the argument list, whatever goes in there. Okay. And then this is the. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I was just. I don't know. I felt like each portion kind of had like a name. 
Uh, well, I think this is called the function definition or header or something like that, but I don't know. Who, who needs a sheet? Okay. Um, this one from yesterday, this a parameter pa passing track, you need to pass them if you have it. Okay, let me pull this up. So to, to make sure you understand this, 